useful that when you are writing the initials of the colors in, you keep only the warm colors in one of the areas and only the cool colors in the other. So this is what your page will look like once you put all of the initials onto your composition. Okay, so as you can see, it looks a little bit like a puzzle at the moment because we've got all of the initials, um, but this is going to be planning that makes your life a lot easier in the long run and it's going to make your artwork look a lot better because it means that you won't have any two of the same color um, right next to each other. Okay, so once you start, or once you, I guess you finish writing those initials in, then you can start coloring in. And like I said before, you can use any type of material to do that. It could be colored pencils, it could be crayons, it could be paint, whatever you have at home that is accessible. Um, it could be textures you can use, that's up to you. Just remember if you are using paint to maybe let your parents know um, just so that you can set it up somewhere in your house where it's not going to be too messy and so you don't damage any furniture, etc. Now, the first thing you're going to do once you write in all the initials is if you've written them in quite dark, just grab an eraser and maybe go over them really lightly just so that when you color over the top of them, you can't see the initial coming through. And basically, you're going to color in your initials first and then you are going to color in the background. So here is an example of the artwork once you have colored the initials in. So already you can see that it's starting to stand out from the background. You can see that in the initials, I've chosen to use warm colors. So I've only used yellow, red, and orange. And there's no area where it's one color is directly next to the same color. You might have some areas here where um, they're touching just at the tip here, but in terms of directly next to each other, there's the good variance, which is what you're aiming for. So once you color in your initials, you need to then color in the background and that is going to be in the opposite set of colors. So in my example, because I've done warm colors in the initials, my background is going to be in cool colors, which are purple, green, and blue. So for my artwork, I used uh, just crayons. So these were really simple. Um, this was a really simple material. It didn't take me too long because the tip of the crayon, as you can see, is um, quite big. So it was easy enough to color in those shapes. And it's created a really cool texture throughout. Okay, so it doesn't matter what type of material you have at home, as long as it's colored, um, and as long as you can access red, yellow, and orange for the warm colors, and blue, purple, and green for the cool colors, then your artwork is going to look good. Now you can also see that once I finished coloring everything in, I've gone over my lines with the Sharpie or the marker, like I said before. So that's why I said you need to try and have a marker for this task because it just finishes off your artwork. So as you can see, it just defines those, um, the difference in the shapes and it just defines the initials from the background a little bit further, okay? And a common question that I get asked is, when you are going over all your lines with a marker, do you still go over the lines within the initials? And the answer is yes. When you are going, or when you're using your marker, you are literally going over all of the lines, okay? Because you want that definition between the shapes. It creates that um, point of interest and it just further emphasizes all of the different colors and the initials from the background. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the video there. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. If you have any further questions while you are completing this task, please feel free to email your teacher and ask them. Okay, thanks guys.